Hello and welcome to the Skyvia Data Flow series. Today's topic is Lookup Component. In this video, we will demonstrate how Lookup Component works and will show you its four main use cases in data integrations. Lookup Component matches input records with records from another data source and adds columns of the matched records to the scope. To configure Lookup, you need to specify behavior, scope, property, and select a connection to get data from. Afterwards, select and configure the action to perform in order to obtain data and map its parameters if needed. Behavior defines what property types and values you get in the lookup component's output. There are five behavior types, first or default. First, single or default, single, and array. You may pause the video to check the description of each behavior in details. If you want to create a new nested type property that will contain lookup results, define its name in the property field. Note that property value is required if lookup behavior is set to array. If you want to extend a nested type property with lookup results, enter its name and scope. Once this is clear, let's move to lookup usage examples. The first example is upserting records. Let's insert only records with a unique email from source to target. In source, we get all the list members from a specific mailing list in MailChimp. Let's configure lookup component to get the IDs of the subscribers from the MySQL table based on the email address of the subscribers from the mailing list in MailChimp. Click on lookup and select your MySQL connection. Choose lookup action and MySQL list members table. Use email as a unique user identifier and set result column to subscriber ID. Finally, map MailChimp's emails with MySQL emails by opening Mapping Editor and selecting Email on the right. If Lookup Find matches, it will take the first value, otherwise it will return null. This happens due to the first or default lookup behavior selected by default. You may read more about lookup behaviors by following the link in the description to this video. Now we have two cases, the first one is when lookup returns a record value and the second one when it returns null. First means that lookup found a match. The second means that no match was found. Let's create a condition branch for each of them. Select conditional split and add a conditional output. Give it a name, I name it match not found. Then open expression editor to create a condition. We use a built-in is null function to check whether subscriber ID is null or not. Once done, connect your conditional split component with one of the target components. Select match not found from the dropdown. We will configure first target to perform action when match is not found. When you set a condition in a conditional split component, it automatically generates a default output for cases that doesn't match your condition. Connect the default output of the conditional split with a second action. It will manage cases when matches were found. Let's finish our data flow by configuring targets. Click on the target that is linked with matches not found output. Name it insert and select MySQL as your connection. Select insert action and choose a table to insert records. Once it's done, open mapping editor and use auto mapping tool to map fields. If some fields are not mapped automatically, map them manually by selecting corresponding fields from the properties list. Click apply to save changes. Select target that is linked with the conditional split's default output. Name it update and select MySQL connection from the dropdown. Choose update action and select a proper table. Select subscriber ID and keys to define which field will be used to match records. Once it's done, open mapping editor and use auto mapping tool to map your fields the same way we did inside the insert action. Click apply to save changes. Let's move to the second example. You can use lookup not only to upsert records, but also for data enrichment. Let's enrich contacts data from a CSV file with related data from Salesforce and load it to CSV. In our case, a CSV file stores emails of the customers. Let's add first name and last name fields to it. Our data flow has three components, a CSV source, a CSV target, and lookup component. CSV source gets emails data from our initial CSV file. Lookup enriches this data with first name and last name fields. CSV target loads enriched data to the target CSV file. Let's take a closer look at lookup component. It uses Salesforce connection and lookup action. 
It looks for first name and last name in the contacts object based on the email value and adds first name and last name to the scope. Email fields are mapped to receive consistent results. In the next example, we will show you how to use lookup to extend the scope with related data. Let's add a related object, a related array, and also add a related array to the object type property. Let's start with a related object. We have a source that gets the contact data from the Salesforce contact with a specific ID. A lookup that looks for name, billing city, and billing country in the account table and adds them to the scope as an object type account property. And a target that loads the updated data to the JSON file. Let's have a closer look at lookup component. As mentioned before, it looks for name, billing city, and billing country fields based on ID. To add them as properties of the account object, use property box in the lookup settings and set there the name for it. In our case, it is account. To make sure everything is right, check the lookup output. If you want to add data as an array instead of object, use array behavior. In this example, lookup checks for ID and quantity based on opportunity ID in the opportunity line item object and adds them to the lines array. ID from the opportunity object is mapped to opportunity ID from the opportunity line item object for the consistent results. To make sure everything is right, check the lookup output. If you want to add data as an array to an object type property, add one more lookup component and use the scope setting in lookup. Let's move back to our account object example and add the contract array property there. Add one more lookup component and configure it. Select the proper connection, select array behavior as we want to add an array property, and select account from the scope dropdown as we want to add our array as a property of the account object. Set the name for the array property in the property box. Choose the fields to look for in contracts object. We choose status, contract number, and description. Select the keys to match the records by and do not forget to map them. To make sure everything is right, check the lookup output. You can use lookup to recover the relations between objects before inserting or updating data. The price book entry in Salesforce represents the price of a product in a price book. We have a CSV file that contains a list of products that includes product names and prices. Let's use the product's name from CSV to look for the corresponding product ID in Salesforce, and then use the product IDs combined with a specific price book ID to get the price book entries to update. Let's check it on our last example. We have a source component that gets the list of products from a CSV file. Then we have a lookup with a first behavior. It means that if there are multiple matches, lookup takes the first value. If there are no matches, input properties are sent to the error output. We are looking for the IDs in the product table based on the product name that we received in the source component and add them as property of the product object with the help of property setting. We send the error output records to our log to keep track of them. For the successfully matched records, we apply a second lookup and look for price book entry ID based on product IDs that we got in the previous lookup and a specific price book ID value. We use the same first lookup behavior and send the output error to the log. Once it's done, we update the price book entry object with our data with recovered relations between products and price book, count the number of success, and fail rows and add failed rows to the log. We hope that this tutorial helped you to better understand the applications of lookup in Dave integrations and the proper ways to configure it. In case of any related questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.